I'm Leo Belinsky, 92 years old, and my generation is the last generation with a direct link to Thurber. My grandfather came from Poland in 1890 and dug coal for 31 years until 1921. And my mother, in all of her 90 years, never lived further from Thurber than two miles where she was born on uh, Pullander Hill in House 512. Now, uh, this movie is over 75 years old, and uh, it, uh, it tells uh, the story of a city and its occupants. Uh, the city of Thurber, Texas, halfway between Fort Worth and Abilene, was uh, totally demolished after 44 years as being a thriving modern city. But the company wanted to get out of the coal business and go into the oil business, so they demolished Thurber. Now, C. E. Buck Hannon had a movie camera in Thurber, probably the only one, and he worked in the mining office in Thurber, and when the mines closed down, or began closing down, he moved to Strong, Texas. But he took some very valuable pictures that have a historical value today because it showed uh, part of the greatest generation in the 1930s, which were very difficult times. Now, I took uh, notes as I watch this movie, and uh, Chris, the director, will make comments and uh, ex explanations. Thank you, Leo. This 16 millimeter film, which was shot by Buchanan, was very deteriorated. Many years later, it was found in a barn in Strawn, Texas. It was then sent to New York University and restored by Miss W.K. Gordon's dime. These houses were of box construction, four outside walls of one by 12 pine boards, the cracks between the boards covered by one by fours. The walls were bare, and the occupants of the house used newspapers and flower paste to cover the walls. The houses cost about $200 to build and were rented for $6 a month. Many families, particularly the Italians, took in boarders for $18 a month. This included three meals a day and laundry. When Thurber was shutting down, these houses were sold for $40, torn down or moved away to be used for housing, barns, or workshops. Nineteen thirty-nine reunion attendees saw an immensely different Thurber landscape than when they lived there. Signs were placed to identify former sites and locations. Marston Street was known as Silk Stocking Row because that was where the white collar managers and supervisors lived. Another sign indicated New York Hill. Texas and Pacific Coal and Oil Company built 31 fancy houses at a cost of $250,000. A quarter mile brick sidewalk from downtown Thurber stair stepped up New York Hill and then continued southward to the houses. Since this was the highest hill, a large freestanding water tank had to be built on the New York Hill for running water to the houses. There is still the concrete foundation of where this tank once stood. While shooting this film, Buchanan visited the colored section of town. That's Albert Whitehead right there. Whitehead was a happy, well-known, and popular African-American who worked in the Thurber Brickyard. When Thurber had shut down, he was allowed to remain in his house and be a caretaker of what remained of the few buildings left in Thurber. Thurber's T&P Oil Company moved its offices to Fort Worth in 1933, but there was still a need for several people to remain in Thurber for various reasons. Harvey Hale remained in Thurber until 1954. He was needed in T&P's oil operations in Ranger, Texas, and Harvey would drive daily 15 miles to Ranger. The eye patch was the result of a firework accident in Thurber. If you worked in Thurber, you had a union card for one of the eight unions in town. 
It is estimated that a half million people in America today have ancestral roots in Thurber. Thurber was a happy, musical city with a dozen different bands and an opera house and a bandstand, electricity, running water, $6 a month rent, no taxes, home health care, no politicians. The coal company in Thurber wanted out of the coal business and get into oil. It began closing its coal mines in 1921. In 1930, Thurber houses and buildings were being moved away or torn down, and by 1935, all that was left were several houses, four buildings, and a smokestack. Most of this movie is devoted to the attendees of the third annual Thurber reunion of 1939. It shows their now demolished city and all the customs of the time. Men tip their hat to women, open car doors for them. Now this was the end of the Great Depression, but the way people dressed didn't seem like it. Most of the men wore ties in spite of the summer heat. There was no car air conditioning. Gasoline was 15 cents a gallon. People didn't have money for entertainment. No TV, no ball games. The Thurber reunion was an occasion to see how your old friends were getting along. Some of the folks brought their own lunches and shared with their friends. Folks were saddened to see the utter demolishment of where they once lived. Stories and memories of Thurber were exchanged, and the cars were very interesting to view. There were old Model T Fords, and there were spare tires and trunks in the back of these cars. This is Boyd's service station and restaurant. This location seemed to be the center point of the 1939 reunion. Many people remembered William Bill Boyd when he was a Thurber constable or the postmaster. And one could buy a nickel soda pop or get a drink of water here. After Thurber was deserted, the Texas Highway Department built a new road, Highway 80, right through what was once Thurber. This road was a straight 60 mile connection between Weatherford and Ranger, Texas. This road is now I-20. Thurber had been previously bypassed in 1922 when the Bankhead Highway was built, the first transcontinental road in America. But this roadway swung toward the north after Weatherford, having been lobbied by politicians so that the Bankhead Highway would pass through the spa city of Mineral Wells and by the renowned Baker Hotel. Then it turned westward through Palapinto and then south to Strong and finally Ranger. One of the Thurber buildings left after the closing of Thurber was the two-story brick drugstore, and the new Highway 80 passed right through it. Billy Boyd leased this building and established a service station and a restaurant. It did well, and it was a very convenient place for gas and a rest stop. And the Highway 80 route was then 10 miles shorter than the Bankhead Highway. This drugstore building and restaurant were destroyed by fire on January 16, 1992. you will continue to see footage of many smiling attendees of the third annual Thurber Reunion, a get-together that was held annually for over seven decades. This film illustrates the love and memories its ex-residents had for Thurber.